last year's Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey ended up being one of the worst films I had seen all almost all of last year, as I've just mentioned. And I recently watched its sequel, which came out earlier this year in Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2, which is now available to stream on Peacock. But is this sequel anywhere better than its predecessor? Or is this one yet another bloodied up, bittersweet experience of a disappointment? Find out in the spoiler free review right now. Fifties average and red breakings and reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Dual, better known to you as the Big D, and this time around I bring to you a spoiler-free review of the 2024 British in independent slasher flick, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2, released by Altitude Film Distribution for Jagged Edge Productions and ITN Distribution. Directed by Reese Frank Waterfield and ran by Matt Leslie. This is the second installment of the TCU, the Twisted Childhood Universe, and sequel to last year's Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, which serves as a, re a horrifying retelling of the book series. If you have not seen my spoiler free review of the first film, I advise you to click on the card there and catch that before I go into this in case you might have missed it or if you want to see it again. All right. Now, this film has a much different cast than the first film. It stars Scott Chambers as Christopher Robin this time, and Ryan Oliver as the titular character, with, with Tallulah Evans, Teresa Banham, Pierre D'Souza, Fahoney, Alec Newman, and Simon Callow in supporting roles. This time around, Pooh is about to embark on a murderous rampage through Christopher Robin's childhood town to seek revenge on him for revealing his existence to the world. The film came out back in March of this year. It was released on the 26th here in the States after it premiered a week before in London. While, it, while unlike its predecessor, it, it got a little bit of decent response in mixed reviews, and was considered an improvement over its predecessor. So I kind of do agree, but let's just go ahead and bring up just the first bit of it. After narrowly surviving Pooh and Piglet's killing spree, Christopher Robin flees from the Hundred Acre Wood and returns to his childhood town of Ashdown to seek help. The corpses of Maria and her friends are recovered from the woods but Christopher is believed to be responsible. The incident is dubbed as the Hundred Acre Massacre, and a film adaptation based on the murders is released, damaging Christopher's reputation in Ashdown. Few people actually believe in Christopher's story, which includes his childhood friends Lexi, Finn, and Ash, and Aaron, as well as his parents, Ellen and Daphne, and his younger sister, Bunny. Now an outcast, Christopher has nightmares about Pooh and goes to his hypnotherapist, Mary Darling, which adds, which I'll give you a heads up, that's kind of an Easter egg for the TCU's next film, but I'll, I'll explain when I get there, okay? To deal with a trauma when his twin brother Billy was kidnapped several years ago during their birthday party and was never seen again. And meanwhile, in the Hundred Acre Wood, Pooh and Piglet are forced to hide with fellow creatures Tigger and Owl when their home is burned down. And after they slaughter three university students in a recreational vehicle, Owl tries to convince Pooh to attack Ashdown instead of waiting for more people to come to the woods. Some hunters led by Aaron ambush the creatures and kill Piglet as revenge for the students' death. Pooh kills him and reconsiders Al's proposal, but Aaron survives and returns to Ashdown. But anyway, things really will, would take a turn for the worst. But anyway, now with Al and Tigger on his side, Pooh's really gone for a real bloody revenge this time. Well, 
this isn't really a great film by any means. I do agree with the critics. This is an improvement over the first film, but still not good, though. Uh, now, before I go into my thoughts, though, I'll give you some, some heads up. Um, the reviews were mixed. It sits at 46% on Rotten Tomatoes, which it's better. They say it represents an improvement over the original in most respects, although the Puniverse remains a place made for hardcore slasher fans. Mad Creek has a score of 27. The AV Club gave this a good review, saying this is cinema at its most punk rock, a raucous, unpolished, cheap, sacred cow shredding middle finger to the mainstream with just enough raw talent inside to keep it from being dismissible. IGN gave it a 6 out of 10, comparing its approach to that of Terrifier 2, and writing it boasts a nastier midnight movie appeal, radical practical effects, and a brisk 90-minute runtime. The shaky first step for Frank Waterfield's proposed Puniverse concept, but it's a step in the right direction. But I'll give you a negative review. Varieties, Owen Gleiberman criticized the screenplay in the direction. He concluded his review by writing somewhere up in drive-in theater heaven. Herschel, Gordon Lewis, and Ed Wood are smiling even if Frank Waterfield makes them look like Scorsese and Spielberg. The Daily Beast said the film boasts a bigger budget, higher production values, and an entirely new cast. Alas, when it comes to the things that matter most, like writing, directing, and acting, it's as chintzy and inept as its predecessor. But nevertheless, the film did do better than its predecessor as well, going on to make seven mil over seven million worldwide against its five hundred million not not million five hundred thousand dollar budget. Whoops, <laughs> sorry, I. Uh, oh my bad, my mistake. Against its five hundred thousand dollar budget. Anyway. Uh, there is to be a third film, but it won't be out. But it won't be coming until 2026, because the TCE, the TCU, will be focusing on something, some other things. Because they've already confirmed Peter Pan's Neverland Nightmare, which I mentioned the character of Mary Darling, who, yes, which that's part of the this year film, which will be a horror take of Peter and Wendy, which should be come, which will be coming out next year, and they've already got. Um, well, the Puniverse Monsters Assemble, which they'll probably do after they do um, Pierre Pan, and then they'll follow up with um, a Bambi horror flick, and of course, um, Pinocchio Unstrung. But anyway, now then. Now for our cast, Scott Chambers plays Christopher Robin, and well, he's okay. And Tallulah Evans played Lexi. I'm going to say that character was fine. Simon Callow played the character of Cavendish. Now it's Newman played Alan. Thea Evans played Bunny. I'm going to say those characters were Well, some of those characters are kind of hair miss. And it's hard to explain after just watching it. Nicola Wright played Daphne. Teresa Bannon played Mary Darling. Now, of course, we'll be seeing more of her in this Twisted Child of the Universe, as I've said already. Flynn Matthews played Finn, and Sam Barrett played Aaron. Now, Winnie the Pooh is portrayed by Ryan Oliver. Now, this time around, unlike the first film, they made the, the character much more, more grizzly-ish, or something like that, because one scene, he really acts like a real monstrous grizzly bear in one scene. Louis Santer takes on the role of Tigger. Now, uh, here's one, uh, another one of my issues with the film. It's a shame we don't get to see much of it until later on. But boy, I gotta tell you, he, and I know he doesn't bounce around like the Tigger we know and love from the, the books and the cartoons, you know. Oh, well. But he still proved to be pretty vicious and scary. Marcus Massey played Owl. And I must say, he was dark and scary and creepy and what have you. Especially when spell out this acid like stuff. <laughs> Man, that was freaky. And Eddie McKenzie played Piglet. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. But 
still not good enough to save this film from being such a big disaster and what have you. But again, as I said, this is a little bit this is a little better than the first film, but not good good by all means. They have Andrew Scott Bell doing the score. It's not too bad. But even so, I really will say that from my point of view, I will I did like um some of the some of the kills and what have you. I mean, there were so many and what have you, especially at this party. Yeah, well that was kind of a factually um good aspect I liked. But hey, don't take my word for it. Again, the film's okay, but just not as good, not as, not a good flick by any means. But I still think it's in Promel, the, the last, the first film, so. But again, I wish the guys at Jagged Edge Productions the best of luck with the rest of the TCU. I might give them a shot when they get them put out on, on streaming and what have you, so we'll see what happens. So from my point of view, We Need the Pooh Blood and Honey 2 is an improvement over its predecessor, but still, but not good by any means, but still an improvement. Some of the characters are a little, mm, yeah, kind of a little unbalanced, or or something like that. Well, balanced and unbalanced. Story's fine and what have you. Not really good though, but still, uh, the but the kills weren't too bad though. So, if you liked the first film, that's it, or you weren't too thrilled with it, I'd say go watch this film. You might enjoy this a little bit more. So, for my score, I'm going to be giving Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2, two and a half stars. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give it a 5. So, what did you think of Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Continue to help support my channel, make it grow, and make the views grow. Tell all your friends about my channel, get them to know me, share my vids with your friends, and maybe they can join me in my Big D Nation. Anyway, join me next time when I bring to you a review of the original Buffy the Vampire Slayer. The actual movie itself. I am going to do the TV series later on. So anyway, if you like this, you may want to check out my reviews for some of these for these films. You can check out my reviews of the Terrifier films. The upper left hand corner is my review of the first film. Or go to the upper right hand corner and see my spoiler free review of Terrifier 2, which is even better. Or you can see my review for the precursor to those films in All Hallows Eve. And the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.